Hey everyone, Dan with Mac Rumors, and it's officially iPhone XS and XS Max launch day. And so in this video, we're gonna unbox the brand new iPhone XS Max, and we're gonna get my overall first impressions of the device. So here's the XS Max. This is the silver 256 gig variant. Um, as you can see, they have the phone listed on the front of the box. Uh, there's really not much else going on. A traditional unboxing experience for the most part here. So we're just gonna do the pull tab. I love that you don't need a knife anymore to unbox these. And then of course, right on top, we have your information guides along with some stickers, pretty, normal stuff. There's also a SIM eject tool if you need to put your SIM card in there. And then right on top is the 10s Max. We're gonna put that to the side. One thing that is different this year is that you don't get the lightning to 3.5 millimeter dongle in the box. Now it costs roughly $9 on uh, apple.com, so you can pick one up if you still need one. But yeah, they didn't include it in the box. I know a lot of people are upset about that but that's just the way it is for this time around. But you do get everything else inside of the box still. Of course, you're gonna have your wall adapter and your lightning cable, as well as your ear pods. Um, again, on the back here, you'll notice that there is no 3.5 millimeter to lightning dongle. So you'll need to pick one up if you still need it, or you can get AirPods, which is I'm assuming is what Apple would want you to do. Uh, but that's all the stuff inside of the box. Nothing different aside from the lack of dongle. So pulling off the plastic here on the 10s Max, First impressions, overall in the hand, it honestly feels really good. I've been kind of against the idea of a larger device this time around as I've gotten used to the iPhone 10. I think it's the perfect size with that 5.8 inch screen in that form factor. Honestly, holding it for the first time in my hands, it doesn't feel that much bigger. Um, I mean, it is bigger. It's about the same size as the iPhone 8 Plus, but um, it doesn't feel that much bigger. Now, of course, once we boot it up and we start going through the operating system, you can definitely tell I have average size hands. It's gonna be hard to reach from one side of the screen to the other. So that's something that you're gonna have to keep in mind if you decide to go with the XS Max. In terms of design of the iPhone XS and XS Max, it won't look much different than the 10 from last year. So aside from the obvious increase in display size and the overall form factor of the XS Max, these phones are pretty identical to last year. So both phones will feature these stainless steel frames, glass bodies that support wireless charging, and uh, your edge-to-edge -edge displays and a true depth camera system for Face ID here where the infamous notch is at. Also, for the first time, there's a new gold color option that joins the silver and space gray finishes. And uh, water resistance has been improved to IP68 to protect against spills and splashes. So as the iPhone XS Max boots up here, I wanted to bring in a couple of other devices to do a sort of a size comparison between them. Um, the iPhone 8 Plus from last year, as well as the iPhone 10 from last year, and then the new Galaxy Note 9, just to kind of get a different end of the spectrum, non-Apple device. The Samsung Galaxy Note 9 has one of the larger displays compared to the other two phones on the 8 and 10 from last year. Uh, it has a 6.4 inch display and the iPhone XS Max has a 6.5. So we'll do a comparison here once this boots up and we can kind of take a look. But in terms of just holding it in your hand, as I mentioned earlier, the 10 and the 10S Max and the uh, 8 Plus from last year are almost identical in size. You can see that they pretty much line up perfectly here. It seems as though the 8 Plus might be a little larger just from my first look, but they are almost identical. And of course you are fitting in a larger display, 6.5 inches as opposed to 5.5 inch, so a full inch larger. Uh, there's no hideous bezels here, the big chin and forehead. Um, and so it's going to make things a little bit difficult to reach in the corner. I can tell you that right now just from looking at it, but um, you do get a lot more packed inside of the same size. So they don't have to make it super big compared to the Note 9, which is significantly taller because they, and they have a 6.4 inch display, but they still have the chin at the top. And although they're minimal and they call it the infinity display and it is near edge to edge, um, it's still not quite the same as the iPhone XS Max. Comparing it to the iPhone 10, there is 
Definitely a difference here, a 5.8 inch display to the 6.5. Overall, the form factor is massive. It's clearly much taller and wider, but if you're getting the 10s Max, you know that coming into it. So obviously there's not a lot of dramatic improvements in terms of design on the outside, but on the inside is where most of the improvements lie with a new seven nanometer A12 Bionic chip, which Apple tells us will be roughly 15% faster than the A11 and a four core GPU that should be up to 50% faster than the A11 chip from last year. We also can't forget about that next gen eight core neural engine, which should dramatically improve apps and features that use AR and machine learning. Also on the back, the cameras are the same 12 megapixel dual camera system that was in the iPhone 10, but they do have some major upgrades. Things like smart HDR has been improved to provide more detail and there's a bigger wide angle sensor. So that should definitely help out with pictures in lower light. There have been some improvements for the camera in terms of software too. Uh, when it comes to the portrait modes, you can actually change the depth of field uh, after the photo has been taken, which is something that other Android phones have had for a little while. And now that feature has been ported over to the iPhone XS and XS Max. Um, so it'll be interesting to see when we get out there, we'll do a full camera test on the iPhone XS, uh, XS Max. So please be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss that video, but we'll be sure to test all of the camera features out but those are some of the improvements that have come to the uh, rear facing camera system. In terms of battery life, Apple has increased the battery life. They state that you can get up to an hour and a half longer uh, over the iPhone 10. And to me, that's a welcome addition because I did not get the best battery life uh, with my iPhone 10. So I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how well the 10s Max uh, performs and how great the battery life is. So my overall first impressions of the iPhone XS Max so far is this is definitely a big phone. It's not as big as I thought it was going to be. So I'm a little surprised at just how good the form factor feels, but it's definitely not going to be a one handed device. Um, like I mentioned before, it's going to be hard to reach those corners. I'm not sure why control center is still in the top, right? This is definitely a phone that makes more sense for it to be in the bottom when you swipe up from any of the corners maybe, but uh, this is definitely a fast and snappy phone. I expect it to be out of the box. One thing I do want to point out is that Face ID does seem to be a split second faster than the iPhone 10. But again, these tests aren't very conclusive. Um, just from doing it at the same time, it seems to have the slight edge. Also, this phone has nothing on it, so it's a clean install. There's a lot going on on the iPhone 10 that I've been using for the past almost a year now. So I can understand, but iOS 12 on both devices have been well, on the 10, it's been fantastic. I can only imagine that the 10s Max will have better performance. That's the hope, it is a newer device. But overall, my first impressions are fairly positive of the 10s Max. I definitely think that if you're going to upgrade from the 10, you should definitely go 10s Max. Otherwise, they're gonna be very similar phones and I can't really recommend going from the 10 to the 10s. but if you want a bigger iPhone, this is definitely the one to go with so far. Uh, fairly positive right out of the box, but be sure to stay locked into macrumors.com and of course the Mac Rumors YouTube channel for plenty of coverage on the iPhone 10s Max in the near future. This has been Dan with Mac Rumors. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.